Ever since 2007, there is a strange phenomenon going on where every now and then human feet will wash ashore around the Salish Sea. The Salish Sea is a body of water connecting the US state of Washington and British Columbia in Canada and hooey this is probably a record for how quickly into a video I can go on a tangent but hey British Columbia last time I checked which was like two days ago when I was writing this script you're neither British nor Colombian change your name so if you've watched any of my iceberg videos, if you haven't, there's a little card up in the corner, you should check it out. Uh, then you know that in those videos, every now and then I'll get to an entry and I'll just say something along the lines of like, well, actually, I'm not gonna talk about this one because I want to do a separate video on it. And this is one of those separate videos, which proves that I'm not lazy. Dad, I, I have a plan. I'm, I'm, do I'm doing my best. I'm, I don't know if it'll work out, but I'm trying. Why, can why, why, why don't you su support me? Dad? So in the second part, I think, of the Wikipedia iceberg, I came across the Salish Sea Foot Discoveries. This was a concept that I was vaguely familiar with from before, hence the tier it ended up in. But I'd never really dug that far into it, but obviously for that video I did, and uh, I love this. <laughs> this is so fascinating, uh, hence this video and why we're gonna be talking about it today. Now, at the end of this video I hope to have two questions answered. Number one, why are there feet washing ashore in the Salish Sea? Could have guessed that one. And number two. But before we get into actually discussing the individual cases at hand here, I'd like to start by playing a little game with you. So come along. So between 2007 and 2019, that's 12 years by the way, how many feet would you deem a high number to find in an area of, I don't know, roughly the size of the Salish Sea? Like where would you draw the line from where it goes from just Oh, what a coincidence. To Soink, Scoob! And before you answer, let me help you out a little bit. One foot is already weird. You shouldn't find a foot. <laughs> Finding a foot is weird. But okay, it's a big area and people die all the time, so maybe once is to be expected. Here's a hypothetical. You get a summer house, okay? You've been saving up for a few years and finally you're at the point where you can comfortably afford a nice little cabin down by the water, just like you've always dreamed. The kids running around playing in the yard, you and the old ball and chain wistfully watching through the kitchen window. In the distance, wind is playing with the rope of a flagpole, producing that familiar snapping sound. But suddenly, this idyllic scene is interrupted by a scream. You run outside as fast as you can to see what's going on. You come down to the water and there's your kid. What's going on, buddy? He points at something on the ground, right where the water meets the shore. It's a foot. The police gets called, they arrive quickly, everything is dealt with, and while it was obviously a traumatic experience, there's not that much more to it. Again, it is a decently big body of water. Somewhere, someone has died for some reason, and then their foot has probably just dislodged, and that's that. Fast forward 10 years, your kids are now in their teens, you and the old gamer girl GF have aged like fine wine. You're sporting something of a George Clooney look if you're curious about the details, good for you, but that's besides the point. This time, there is no screen. Instead, it's a Tuesday. You've resigned to the bedroom and turned off the lights. Blissfully slumbering, you're suddenly stirred awake from someone putting a hand on your shoulder. You look up. Next to your bed stands a strange man, but... No, it's not a strange man, it's your son. Jeez, how time has passed. Your son towers over you, the moonlight just barely illuminating his face in the dark. His eyes are glanced over. Is that a trembling of his lip you're seeing? Wake up, Dad. What is it, son? New foot just dropped. Now at this point, is this not the wildest thing? Two separate feet found at completely separate times, just a few years apart, 
around the same general area. Like, I don't know about you, but I feel like that's the sort of thing you'd tell your grandkids about eventually, right? Okay, so here are the rules to the game. This was all part of the game, remember that. Uh, so, keeping this anecdote in mind, and without googling, put in a comment how many individual feet you think have been found around the Salish Sea. The first comment to correctly guess the exact number, or the person who is the closest in like a week or two if no one gets it exactly, will be rewarded the title of Fum the fucking Master. I will be announcing the winner in a separate video on my second channel, Extra Jet. Check it out. Good luck, may the odds be ever in your favor, and NO CHEATING! If you cheat, you're a lame, boring nerd. We could never be friends in real life. And if you do it, I hope that you never get another fucking victory royale ever again. Yeah, I went there, okay? So, just don't do it. Hello class, I'm Professor Jeff and it's become time finally to dive just a little bit deeper into the Salish Sea foot discoveries. So first of all, the information for each of these cases varies pretty greatly, but I've tried to compile the relevant information as comprehensible as possible, meaning that I'll be presenting the details that I deem to be necessary or noteworthy for each entry. This may include, but isn't limited to, facts such as shoe model, shoe size, shoe color, gender of the foot, coordinates of where the foot was found, who found the foot, and of course, the origins of the foot, if available. So, let me just... Uh... Okay, so on this here map of the Salish Sea, I have marked out some important landmarks that relate to the findings, obviously. And I'll be placing markers throughout so that you'll be able to easily get a visual representation of where each of these findings happened. So the first foot was found on August 20th, 2007 at Jebediah Island, British Columbia. Oh, I guess this right there. A 12-year-old girl was out doing 12-year-old girl shit when she stumbled upon a size 12 black and white Adidas shoe, according to some sources. It was a white and blue mesh, according to some other sources, and it had a sock in it. The little girl opened up the sock, and contained within the sock was a man's right foot. Six days later, August the 26th, at Gabriola Island, British Columbia, a couple was out hiking and stumbled upon a shoe with a sock in it containing a man's right foot. Keep this pace up and by September, we'll have a whole guy! <laughs> but did any keen-eyed viewers note something there? Both of these feet were men's right feet. Hence, they did not come from the same man, which I find very odd. The first shoe was identified as belonging to a missing man suffering from depression, so draw your own conclusions there if you want to. The second foot was, and continues to be as far as I can find, unidentified. Number 3. February 8, 2008, Waldus Island. A right foot in a size 11 Nike shoe is discovered. It was identified as belonging to a 21-year-old man from Surrey, reported as missing four years prior. Police deemed his death as not suspicious. Number 4. Kirkland Island, British Columbia, which is supposedly somewhere right around here. And I'll admit, I'm not an expert at the Vancouver area, so if this is a little bit off, I apologize and blame my sources. A woman's foot is discovered this time, and it's discovered in a blue and white New Balance sneaker. Number 5. Westham Island, British Columbia, also in this general area. 2008, June 16th, and two hikers stumble upon our first lefty. It was found floating in the water around here, and pretty soon it was confirmed that this foot pairs up with foot number 3, the size 11 Nike. The plot thickens. I don't really know what I mean by that. I don't think the plot actually thickens. Uh, this doesn't mean much other than the fact that they now found both feet for one person. Number 6, August 1st, 2008, all the way down here, near Pisht, Washington. A right foot inside of a man's black size 11 shoe was discovered by a camper on the beach. There's not that much more on this one, other than the fact that the sheriff department apparently agreed on August 5th that the foot could have been carried south from Canadian waters. Which I think is pretty funny, and uh, if I ever find a foot, I'm just going to immediately assume uh, that it somehow made its way over to where I am from Canada. 
Number seven, a woman's left foot inside of a blue and white New Balance sneaker on May the 22nd, 2008. Richmond, British Columbia. And yes, it has since been confirmed that number seven and number four both belonged to the same person. Number eight. 2009 was overall a dull year in the feet finding business with only one discovery, that being on October 27th in Richmond, British Columbia, which is about here. I even think we might have mentioned it once already. Have we? I don't know. There's a lot of places to keep track of. It was a right foot in a size eight and a half Nike running shoe. And it was eventually identified as belonging to a man from Vancouver who was reported missing in January of 2008. Moving on to number nine. This one was found on August the 27th of 2010 at Whidbey Island, which is in Washington. A woman's or a child's foot was found. The police did DNA testing on it, but no match could be found. The second find of 2010 and the tenth find overall of feet in the Salish Sea happened on December 5th all the way down here in Tacoma, Washington. This one was also described as belonging to, quote, a juvenile or small adult, end quote. It was wearing a hiking boot. Foot number 11, August 30th, 2011, Falls Creek, British Columbia. That's here. The sex of the person that the foot belongs to remains unknown. Apparently they couldn't determine it, but it was wearing a blue size nine runner shoe. Not very far from there on November 4th of 2011 at Sassamit Lake, British Columbia, foot number 12 was found. It was discovered by a group of hikers and it was later identified by the coroner service as belonging to a Stefan Saruiko, a local fisherman who went missing in 1987. And if my math is correct, that's 23 years of the foot just kind of doing its thing uh, before being discovered. Police did not suspect any foul play. Foot number 13 was found at Lake Union, Seattle, Washington. And in true Seattle fashion, it wasn't just a foot, it was a human leg and a foot. And it was found inside of a black plastic bag under the Ship Canal Bridge. The medical examiner could not find a cause of death, nor could they identify the remains of the body. While this one is probably our most clear-cut case of a uh, foul play, it is also, at least to me, the least interesting, seeing how it was found in a bag under a bridge. This is obviously a murder followed by an attempt to hide the body and it's just not as uh, mysterious as the rest. So moving on to number 14. On January the 26th of 2012 in Vancouver, British Columbia, the remains of quote, what appears to be human bones inside of a boot, end quote, was discovered in the sand along the waterline at a dog park by the Maritime Museum near Arbutus Street. That doesn't mean anything to me, I've never been there, but it's supposedly around here. Number 15, on the 26th of May, 2014, in Seattle, Washington again, believe it or not, but a foot was found. The foot was wearing a white New Balance Model 622 athletic shoe with a white and blue trim. Now you might be thinking of number four, but as you might remember, that one already has been paired up with another shoe. But also, that shoe was a model manufactured in 1999, and this 622 model one was manufactured and first available for sale in April of 2008. Number 16, February 7th, 2016, Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Hikers find a foot in a sock inside of a runner's shoe. Not much more is known about this one, but it was around here. Only five days later, on February the 12th of 2016, number 16's sibling, number 17, was found. Coroners later confirmed that number 16 and 17 was in fact a match, and it was found just next to the last one. For number 18, which was found on December 8th of 2017, we don't have to move very far. The remains of a leg with a shoe attached washed up near the settlement of Jordan River on Vancouver Island, around here. Number 19, shortly after noon on Sunday the 6th of May 2018 in Gabriola Island, British Columbia. A man walking along the shore finds a foot wearing a hiking boot wedged inside of a log jam. Also, I had to look up what a log jam is and apparently it's when a bunch of logs form a blockade in a body of water. Maybe 
uh, I could have guessed that, but I didn't. And if you didn't either, now you know. Number 20. Sometime in September, unclear date. I bet that the year wasn't unclear, but for some reason it's not on my uh, teleprompter right now, so I'll put it up as a text. Uh, in West Vancouver, British Columbia, up here, a foot is discovered wearing a blue sock and a size 9.5 light grey Nike Free RN shoe. This shoe was manufactured between February and April of 2017. The victim could not be identified, but is believed to be a man under the age of 50 with a medium-sized penis. <laughs> I made that last part up. I think I meant uh, to delete it of the script, <laughs> but it was on there now. Um, in my defense, statistically, uh, that's probably true. Just logically speaking, uh, he is most likely to, to have a medium-sized penis, so uh, do with that what you will. And finally, let's extend this one last time, number 21. On January the 1st of 2019, down over here at Jetty Island, Everett, Washington, a foot wearing a boot was found and later tied through DNA testing to an Anthony Neal reported missing since December 12, 2016. And that's it. 21. That's the final count of feet found around the Salish Sea between 2007 and 2019. You can no longer enter into the foot fucking master competition, but for those of you who already sent your answers in, good luck. So why is this happening? Let's look into some theories that's been presented over the years. One theory is that the feet belong to the passengers of a plane crash that happened in 2005 outside of Quadra Island. The plane was going from Vancouver Island to British Columbia mainland but crashed somewhere along the way. Only one problem here though is that that plane had five passengers, one of whose body was washed up on shore at Quadra Island with both feet intact, I'm pretty sure. And uh, the others have never been found, but as far as I know, they also all uh, only had two feet each. Another theory that I found interesting was that while not all of them, the majority of the shoes found on the feet were produced 2004 or earlier. This led some to believe that all of the feet originated from people who got swept up in the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. While it would be quite a distance for the feet to travel, they argued that feet are lightweight enough to be able to be carried long distances underwater or floating on top of the water, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Other theories are, of course, serial killers, government cover-ups, illegal immigrants, illegal aliens, legal aliens, the Soviet Union, and those damn kids skateboarding on the sidewalk. I don't know how, but I'm sure they cost this with their sushi and Walkman. The truth of the matter is that this mystery is, in fact, a mystery in, like, the truest sense of the word. It's a case where no matter what logical explanation you come up with, it doesn't fully explain the statistical anomaly why it had happened so much more in this specific area and nowhere else. Or at least that's how I want to think about it, because that being said, there have been some pretty uh, valid theories from a more scientific crowd that have been verified, or as I like to call it, lame nerd shit. <laughs> <laughs> Proving things with math, science bitches hating cool shit. But I guess we should break that down as well, so let's do it. Most, if not all, of this explanation comes from this article by Erika Engelhaupt, published in National Geographic in March of 2021. This article states that, first of all, one must understand what happens to a body in water. According to a 1977 study called Human Body Buoyancy, a study of 98 men, 98 men were tested to conclude whether a human body is more likely to sink or float. And long story short, despite popular belief, a body is seemingly more likely to sink than to float. Okay, so then a researcher named Gail Anderson has conducted several studies of how bodies decompose in water. Using a pig as a stand-in for a human, the pig was dropped into water, but not any water. This study was actually done in the Salish Sea, despite this being before the first foot find, so that's a very happy coincidence for us. So they drop the pig carcass into the water, it sinks to the bottom, but what do they find out? Well, perhaps surprisingly, within a matter of hours, an quote, 
unruly mob of shrimp, lobsters and Dungeness crabs started eating the carcass. Apparently a full pig could be skeletonized in a matter of four days. Now these sea critters prefer soft tissue, so it's pretty logical that a person wearing a shoe would pretty quickly have their legs stripped of flesh all the way into the bone. And as you may know, our feet joints are mostly made up of ligaments and other connective tissue, meaning that the foot would pretty easily detach from the rest of the body. Then looking at the shoes, specifically the type of shoes that most of the feet were in, we find that it is mostly sneakers. And this isn't a coincidence according to this article, because shoes of this nature, especially made around 2003 or later, uh, all started to have a lighter sole uh, with a lot of air mixed in, some even famously spouting the air pocket in the sole. So in short, once the foot is detached, it'll float up to the surface because of the shoe. But then the question still remains, why here in the Salish Sea? Well, according to Parker McCready, professor of oceanography, it makes a lot of sense. McCready made a three-dimensional simulation of the coastal ocean of the Pacific Northwest, including the Salish Sea. This software is called Live Ocean and was made to be able to predict how a theoretical oil spill in the ocean would travel over the course of three days. But what about a theoretical foot spill? Well, turns out this software is able to predict that as well. And as it turns out, the answer is pretty simple. The Salish Sea has, to quote the article, the perfect storm of foot ensnaring properties. In fact, I'm gonna read you a section straight from the article. The reasons add up. First, it's an unusually large and complex body of inland water, which acts as a trap. As McCready's model shows, once something goes in the water, it might wash ashore in plenty of places, but it's still within the Salish Sea. Second, the prevailing winds are westerlies, so they bring stuff from the ocean rather than pushing it out to sea. And finally, there's something that McCready's model doesn't show, but that he points out. You see a lot of folks wearing sneakers at the beach in the Pacific Northwest, where many choose to hike among the slippery rocks. Taken together, all these factors, plus the cold deep waters and healthy scavenger populations, make the Salish Sea the ideal foot magnet. So there you have it, the scientifically proven, most likely reason for the Salish Sea foot discoveries. Personally, however, I have another theory. Have feet? Hi, I'm Gobby Lin, but you can call me Gob, and this is my son, Gobbert Lin. You can call him Gobbert Lin. Ever since the 1600s, when my great-great-grandfather, Gobraham Lin, started collecting human feet and throwing them in the ocean, it has been considered in the community of us goblins a time-honored tradition. Isn't that right, son? Uh... Shut up, Gobbert. Gobbert isn't allowed to speak on camera. Ah! But times have changed, and so have we goblins. Gone are the days where goblins like us would just walk into a human's bedroom at night and steal their feet in their sleep. Those days are behind us. We're not savages. We're, We're goblins. goblins. All we want is your feet. But I know what you're thinking. These goblins want my feet, but I use my feet. But I'm here to tell you that it's an easy process and maybe you're not using your feet as much as you think. The way it works is that me and my son Gobbertlin come into your apartment at night and we take your feet and then, and, and then we run with the feet down to the water and we chuck them out and then we sneak back into your bedroom and we put money under your uh, leg stumps and that way you can make money. I started filming this without a real plan of where it was gonna go uh, but it was, it's supposed to be a Patreon ad uh, so uh, patreon.com slash uh, go there I would really appreciate it uh, I I'm, I'm not making almost any money currently uh, let me get back into character and then us goblins uh, we have thrown your f your feet uh, into the water I have nothing I don't I, I, I have no idea what I'm doing so come on down to the G goblin feet emporium today thank you so much for watching this video please hit the subscribe button just for me just this one time like you never listen to youtubers saying that I know how it is but just this one time. It's the same with the like button, it won't hurt ya. When you woke up this morning, you didn't think that you'd do that today, but here you are at the end of this entire video still watching, and all I'm asking of you is for you to fucking smash those two buttons for me. I think it's a fair exchange. On my second channel that I mentioned before, I will be posting something of a making off for this video if you're interested in uh, that. It's gonna be sort of like a vlog style video of me 
uh, writing, shooting, editing and producing this video. But also uh, to see the reveal of the winner of the title of Foot Fucking Master. Probably could have workshopped that title a little bit more. But that should be all. Thank you again for watching. Thank you to my patrons. And if you just want to see another video in this one, I talk about spontaneous human combustion and it's pretty similar to this video. So if you like this, you might like that. Have a good one. <laughs>